Good afternoon. It is 4 p.m. here in South Korea. I am Arirang News, AI anchor, Ari. The South Korean government announced that it will maximize the operation capabilities of public hospitals in response to doctors' collective action against the medical school enrollment quota increase. At the first Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasure Headquarters meeting to discuss the issue on Friday, Prime Minister Han duk Su said that they will work to extend the operating hours of public hospitals as much as possible on weekdays as well as on weekends and holidays. This comes after the government raised its health and medical treatment disaster crisis warning level to severe on Friday morning, which is one step up from the previous level of alert. The foreign ministers of South Korea, the United States, and Japan convened in Brazil on Thursday on the sidelines of the G20 foreign ministers meeting. This was the first trilateral meeting for South Korea's newly appointed foreign minister Cho tae who sat down with his U.S. and Japanese counterparts, Antony Blinken and Yoko Kamikawa, with the top agenda items, including North Korea's escalating military threats. The three senior diplomats emphasized the need for joint efforts. Thursday's session also underscored the intensifying collaboration among the three countries on a broad spectrum of challenges, from ensuring economic security to addressing the Russia-Ukraine war. On Wall Street, the S&P 500 closed at a fresh record on Thursday, powered by investors piling into growth in technology stocks. The S&P 500 gained 2.11%, marking its best day since January 2023, as did the Dow Jones Industrials, which gained 1.18%. It was the first time the Dow has ever finished above 39,000 points. The Nasdaq Composite added 2.96%, for its best day since February 2023. Shares of NVIDIA jumped 16.4% to an all-time high driven by its booming artificial intelligence business. NVIDIA's surge in value also boosted CEO Jensen Huang's wealth, with Bloomberg now listing him as 21 richest person in the world. The lunar lander Odysseus, made by US firm Intuitive Machines, has made history by becoming the world's first privately built spacecraft to land on the surface of the moon. The mission was completed successfully at around 6.23 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday. Confirmation of the landing took several minutes before a faint signal was detected. The company says it is working to collect more information. Sponsored by NASA, Odysseus, or the Nova Sea Lander, was launched using the SpaceX Falcon rocket one week ago. It is now the first American lunar exploration lander to touch down on the surface of the moon in more than 50 years, since the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. An attorney for former crypto entrepreneur Do Kwon is challenging the latest decision by a court in Montenegro for him to be extradited to the U.S. The defense has vowed a legal battle to push for Kwon's extradition to South Korea instead. Kwon's attorney Goran Roddick said he would appeal as the court didn't verify accuracy of facts. He didn't elaborate, saying details will be presented in the upcoming appeal. He also argued that the high court's decision on Wednesday for Gwon to be extradited to the U.S. was an illegal decision that cannot hold before the appeals court. That is all for today. Thanks for watching.